Hi all and welcome to Beamlock channel. In today's video, we'll be discussing what is the best software to program your BMW. By program, I mean how to update the software of your BMW. I'll go into the details, which softwares you can use and which do I prefer personally. We will discuss, we will discuss pros and cons of two softwares that are most common to work with BMWs. When we are talking about BMW programming, it is a very specific topic. If you haven't seen my previous video, what can go wrong during the programming, or actually, what are the most common issues why the programming aborts, absolutely feel free to see the following video. If you are programming the BMW, if you are going to program the BMW, you have to understand, you have to make the right choice. You have to choose either the ISTA or the ACES. To choose one or another, you have to understand what are the pros and cons of different softwares. Because personally, I use both to update the software of the BMW, but for certain situations, one is better than another. The structure of this video will be very straightforward. I will compare two softwares, those pros and cons of both of those. First, we will begin with the ISTA, pros and cons, and then with the ACES, pros and cons. And in the end, I will tell you what is my preference for updating the software of the BMWs. And actually, did you know that if you are subscribed to my channel, it gives you plus two to programming speed of any BMW. So don't miss that opportunity. Hit that subscribe button. First of all, ISTA. If you don't know anything about ISTA, see that video. Over there, I'm explaining how to use ISTA to properly diagnose the BMW. It is absolutely must know knowledge. If you don't know that, do not proceed with the programming because it is dangerous. So ISTA, it stands for Integrated Service Technical Application. BMW dealers use that to diagnose the BMW and to code and program it. Today we're talking about the programming, comparing ISTA to ACES based on the programming, why to prefer one to another. First, the pros of the ISTA. It is very straightforward. It is just easy to use. You take your ICOM or INET cable, you connect to your car and to the ISTA, you click next, next, next. You drink some coffee, you click next, next, and the programming begins. You don't have to know anything about BMW or ISTA or anything. Looks like it's just straightforward and what can go wrong? Actually, there are many things that can go wrong. Because that software, it is dealership level software. It is just made to work straightforward. And if something is wrong, ISTA just tells you, okay, replace that issue or replace the whole car and so on and so on. That's why it is easy to use if, only if, your car is almost brand new and nothing has been exchanged there. Then it will be just continuing straightforward. If any modifications are done, then it's not as easy anymore. Second plus of the ISTA, it gives you a very good overview of the vehicle before the programming of your BMW and after, because diagnostics is the must step before updating the software. You have to know what is the state of the vehicle before you actually starting to making any modifications to the vehicle. It has very good diagnostics uh, capabilities. Also, ISTA, after the programming, is able to make the initialization of some ECUs. For example, if you program the ACSM or uh, airbag ECU, ISTA is required to lock the airbag ECU in, in order to make it usable again. Because without that, your airbag indicator will be just flashing on your dashboard and your airbag system will be not usable. That's why it is absolutely must to initialize that ECU. And the same thing, for example, for the HKFM or trunk ECU. If you reprogram that one, it is very often needed ISTA is needed to initialize the end and open point of the trunk. Without that, ECU might not work properly. And ISTA has those uh, functions built in. That's why it is absolutely plus for the ISTA. And actually, guys, that's it for the pros uh, of the ISTA. Now we go for cons. Uh, the huge, the biggest problem of the ISTA that you cannot program single ECU. If you're going to program the BMW, it will reprogram all the ECUs. And what is the problem of that? For example, if your BMW has been chip-tuned, it means your software in your engine ECU is been modified. 
and you need to update all the other ECUs, you cannot skip the engine ECU. ISTA works with all the ECUs. It is related to the integration level uh, between the different ECUs. Of course, yes, it's always better to update the all ECUs at once, but sometimes it is just absolutely must not to update all the ECUs, but just skip one or two. And ISTA actually cannot do that. It works only with the whole car, and it is the huge, huge downside of using the ISTA. Uh, next, uh, minus point for ISTA, it actually comes from the previous one. You are unable to program a single ECU. For example, if you need to update only one ECU, before the chip tuning, you want to have the newest software in your engine ECU. You update only one ECU, then you make the chip tuning. ISTA is unable to do that because to work with the whole car at once. This is huge minus. Next minus, ISTA cannot FDL code the ECU. You cannot go inside the ECU and change parameters inside the ECU. What is the FDL coding? See my ACs for dummies uh, part one. Over there you will see how to go inside the ECU and change the different parameters. ISTA just cannot do that. ISTA makes only the VO coding based on your vehicle order. And that's why it's uh, also downside. The dealership level software just does not allow you to go inside the ECU. And sometimes it is very, very necessary. One more huge minus, it is very complicated to work with the BMWs that do have some retrofits made. Why? Because ISTA assumes that the car is in factory settings. If you have made any modifications with some retrofits, yes, it's still possible to use ISTA to update the software of the whole BMW. But if the retrofit is from a sort that cannot be used on that vehicle from the factory, then ISTA will just refuse uh, to take it. Even if you use brand new parts and so on, it will just refuse because uh, that kind of configuration is not possible. And you are not able to make any changes in the vehicle order in the ISTA. You just have to use one vehicle order to program the whole car. And in case of cars with retrofits, it is very often not the case. That's why if you have retrofit, ISTA is not for you anymore. And absolute killer with the ISTA is ability, actually disability to work with used ECUs. What does it mean? If you have the BMW that is a bit older than brand new, basically it is like 5-10 years old, what is the probability that at least one of the ECUs was replaced to a used one in your BMW? It is kind of high. And if ISTA detects that one of the ECUs was previously installed on another BMW, it will just refuse to work with that. You will be unable to program the whole car just because of one ECU that was taken from the scrapyard. ISTA will just refuse and just ask you, please replace it with a brand new one. Only then it will be able to continue. Without that, it's just no-go. And what is the likelihood of one of the issues being replaced on old car? Absolutely very likely. That's why ISTA will just refuse and it is absolutely showstopper. As you have seen, ISTA is very useful. It is very easy to use, just straightforward, but it has very many downsides. And you have to know what, what are those downsides before choosing another software. Another software will be the ACS. Let's start with the um, uh, cons first. ACS is engineer level software. What does it mean? It means it is way more complicated. If in the ISTA previously you just connected to the car, press next, next, drink coffee, press next, next, and programming begins. With the ACES, it's engineer level software. It is used on the factories of BMWs and it is way more complicated. It's impossible to just press next, next and achieve something with ACES. It will just not work. You require way more knowledge to work with the ACES. It is way more complicated and it is the, definitely the cons for the ACES. Second downside of the ACES, in addition to its complexity of usage, it is its inability to make the diagnostics of the BMW. Yes, I'm aware that with the help of the launchers, you can still make the diagnostics of the BMW through the ACES itself, but it's not as good as with the help with the use of the ISTA. Also, not only diagnostics, but after the programming, you need ISTA to make initialization of some ECUs as I told previously during our talk about the ISTA. That's why ISTA will be still required. You just cannot make the full software update with the ACs only. 
you will use the ACES and you will still need the ISTA. But let's go to the pros of ACES and you will actually see how many pros ACES have. First, biggest plus of the ACES, it gives you full access to your BMW. You can do absolutely everything because it's factory level software. Of course, full access means that you have to know a bit more about the ACES. But if you know how to use that, if you have seen my ACES for dummies manuals, you will be able to assess your BMW at a level that's absolutely non-thinkable for the BMW dealership level. Second one, you can code one ECU at a time if needed, or you can code all the ECUs, or you can code three, four, five, whatever number of ECUs at a time, whatever you wish. For example, you replaced one of the ECUs, that would be the trunk ECU HKFM. You use the used parts, you install it to your vehicle, you can code it to your vehicle, and you don't need to recode or reprogram the whole vehicle. You can still be working with only one issue and everything will work flawlessly. ACES allows you to do the FDL coding of your ECU. You can go inside the ECU and change the single parameters over there. For example, how your lights will be flashing, uh, how is your windows opening, are they being blocked during opening of the door, and so on and so on and so on. Those functions are absolutely non-doable with the ISTA, but they are absolutely doable with the ACES. Another one, if, for example, ISTA is unable to just code or program the ECUs, it does all the package at once. With ACES, you can not only code one ECU, but you can also program one ECU. You can select if you want to program and then code, or just program, or just code, and so on. So it gives you the full access. So programming one ECU or three ECUs or all the issues at the time is also an option with the ACES. Another one, if something goes wrong during the programming of a BMW with the ACES, you have a huge variety of options to try to recover that ECU. First of all, you can just try to program it one more time, same as with the ISTA. But the difference is the ISTA will try to reprogram the whole car or one ECU, you are not controlling that. With the ACES, you can specifically choose, I want to reprogram only that ECU one more time. And if it does not help, you still have a lot of buttons to press. For example, you can choose between the parallel programming or no. You can choose the uh, through which bus the programming will be done with different speeds and way more other settings to try. Because sometimes it is required to play with the settings, with, for example, with the connection speed and so on, to achieve the good result. One more not so obvious plus of that software, of the ACES, that you can have several versions of the ACES installed on the same computer. You might think, okay, why do I need several versions? Believe me, you will need at least three, four or five different ACES versions because different ACES versions treat your BMW a bit differently because they were produced during the different years and they use a bit different approach to program uh, the ECU. And that's why if with one version of the ACES something goes wrong, you can straight away use another version. With the ISTA, it is ish the same thing is possible but installing the several versions of the ISTA to the same computer is not as straightforward as with the ACES. It's still possible but not as straightforward. With the ACES having for example five different ACES installed at the same machine it is way easier. And the biggest plus of the ACES is when programming of your BMW with the ISTA fails ACES helps. Guys, just guess. For example, you bring your BMW to your local dealer and something goes wrong there. Programming is aborted, blue screen, whatever happens and actually nothing works. And dealer is unable to recover your car with the ACS, uh, correction, with the ISTA. Do you know what they're actually doing? They're calling the support, support of the BMW and some technician from the BMW factory actually connects remotely and fix your BMW, guess with what? With the help of the ACES. So when ISTA fails, ACES helps. I assume you already got the point. What is my preference of those softwares? Of course, for BMW software update, I always use ACES. Yes, it's more complicated, but actually it is not as complicated. If you just need to update the software in some ECUs, with the ACES, it is not so difficult. Yes, it will require a bit more knowledge from your side, but believe me, 
it is in the end it will be even faster because you just have to learn how to use tools properly as a final remark small bonus from me to you guys my dear subscribers what is the sequence that i'm using when i have to update software of the bmw first of all the visual inspection of uh, the bmw you have to ask the owner of the car are there any retrofits or modifications done in the vehicle because you cannot update in the same way the BMW that is stock from the factory or that has retrofits made or any chip tuning made. Those are different approaches. If the BMW is stock from the factory, it's easy. Just go next, 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 and basically that's it. If it has done some retrofits, you have to know which retrofits, and basically after the software update, you have to make all the same software modifications over there. That's why approaching the cars with retrofits it requires way more knowledge. You have to know how to make that retrofit software-wise. This is step number one. It's important to inspect the car. Second thing, of course, connecting the power supply and making all those things. It's absolutely non-negotiable. Then, before I go to update the software, I perform full diagnostics of the vehicle. Always. Because after software update, if any new errors appear, I just cannot know where the present before my intervention into the car or after that's why diagnostics before it's absolutely must if vehicle has any errors present always make print screen of those errors it helps a lot with uh, when explaining to the customer that they, they were actually present before only when the diagnostics is done then i go to update the software of course i prefer aces software has been updated then I use ESTA again to make the diagnostics again, to make all the initializations and make all the necessary adaptations inside the vehicle because ACs just cannot make it. And only then, after the final diagnostic, when I see that I have achieved the result, I can give the car back to the customer. This is the only sequence how BMW software update has to be done because software update is unreturnable process. You just cannot in reinvent the time machine and go back in time and pretend nothing happened. You just cannot downgrade the software in all the ECUs so easily. Yes, it's still doable, but believe me, downgrading the software, sometimes it will require way more tools than upgrading the software. That's why always check the vehicle, diagnostics, software update, diagnostics, and only then you can give the car back to customer. I hope you enjoyed that video and see you next time. Bye.